Hello, Mixer. How we doing this evening? Uh, afternoon, evening, depending where you are. Maybe late evening if you're across the Atlantic. Um, doing stuffed onions. Found these cute little pearl onions. Well, not pearl onions. They're, they're red onions. Um, thought I'd give this a try. This is an idea I've been kicking around in my head. This isn't a recipe that I'm following or anything along that line. Uh, though it's not rocket science either. I'm hollowing out some onions here and baking them. Uh, hopefully Still got some stuff going on in the bottom of the oven here oven may be a little bit too smoky tonight We may be doing doing these in the pan because of that. We'll see uh, <laughs> But uh, besides the uh, Stuffed onions, which we're gonna be stuffing these with uh, this whole bunch of we're gonna fit all of the spinach in these onions Because <laughs> uh, we're gonna cook it down along with some garlic and uh, a bunch of, uh, I've got a bunch of uh, Polish sausage or bulk sausage. Uh, not a very spicy sausage. That was the sort of plan. But, uh, and so we'll, we'll pack these full of all that goodness after we hollow them out. And hopefully throw them in the oven. Otherwise we'll uh, braise them on the stove. And uh, we'll go from there. Also I got some lovely uh, blood oranges here going to be taking those and juicing them and zesting them and creating a uh, small batch of uh, orange sorbet for us tonight. Um, so I'll start by getting the spinach cleaned up actually. Get this Toss the ugly leaves aside and nice ones down straight down into the colander here. And the colander might have been a bad choice. I think it's a little too small for this project. I really want to get off the huge colander though. I don't know if my large calendar can even... Oh, I don't think I put it in the trailer. I have a big calendar. drain for a little bit here that's obviously going to go under more cleaning if you've not dealt with spinach at least they're getting better about it and some of the bubble packs they're they're okay these days but uh, if you've ever really gotten spinach especially back in the day uh, you need to clean it and you need to clean it again and you need to clean it again um, 
There's usually just so much sand. So much sand. Um. Okay, so we'll clean onions now while we're letting that dry out. Just gonna take the very tip off of these, give it a score, and peel the dry layers off here. Why you gotta be so difficult, you small little onion? Why did I have to pick small, cute little onions here to stuff? And start by just cleaning that up. That's one. Started.
No, I don't have the coronavirus, at least yet. Although now they're sort of predicting that everyone's going to get it. Well, isn't this exciting? Peeling onion stream. So, Formula One testing is done. Melbourne soon. When is Melbourne? Uh, very uh, interesting after testing here. No one really uh, played their hands too much. Um, sort of made it look like uh, Mercedes may have some reliability issues, which it's testing. Are, are you? They really reliability issues, or are they actually testing their engines? I mean, I'm sure they can test them on a dyno just as well, too, but for certain aspects, it's not going to replicate the true test. I have a pretty good idea what they can do these days, too, which is just about replicate just about any environment. But I'm talking to talk because peeling onions by itself is rather uninteresting. And yeah, I wouldn't want a random person coming by the stream thinking that this is all that we're going to be doing tonight. <laughs> I'm not even doing this well on camera. Um, I think I want to go even one more layer deep on this guy. We'll see. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's a matter of how leathery it is. This guy's on the edge. They get leathery and then they dry out. And there was one of them that this guy, I think, had a layer that gets, when well, it gets sort of, um, I took that as a sign as that guy was probably going to turn moldy soon. Um, 
when they have that sort of moist layer in between. I don't know if it's it's a poorly cured onion that causes that or if it's an infection that's growing that causes that. But those two seem to go hand in hand. Can obviously save all this other onion here for any of your other projects you use onion for. Can use a melon baller, can use a spoon, can use a knife. This guy is what's, uh, actually I don't know if it's an official one, but, or if it's a cheapo edition. This is a tomato shark, which is sort of like a cross between a melon baller and, uh, I don't know what, it's got the teeth on it. So that, it's designed so you can take the core out on a tomato really quick and easy. Pierces the skin. Works really well for that. But I use it for a bunch of other stuff too, so, like this. Pretty good use for this. So we got that hollowed out somewhat nicely there. And we got a cap for it too. Yeah, a bit thick on that one. There we go, number two. The idea is try and be somewhat even on the sides all around. If you want to be try and spend forever and break out the individual layers, you probably could get a nice break in between the individual layers in this. I'm just not worrying about that. Oops. There we go. There we go. Yeah, you see that's what I was sort of worried about. But we'll pop that right back in. Now 
<laughs> like it never happened. <laughs> we lost the insides of that. Okay. <laughs> just going to happen again, so I'm just going to leave the two of them there. Got another bottom pulling up through here. There we go. So this is all perfectly good. We can save that for some other project here in the near future. sausage there.
trying not to get soap on the good spinach. Oops. Clean the rack here in the last couple of minutes before the stream started here and put the rack back on backwards. Let's pull our spinach back over here now. And we're going to clean them now. Take the major parts of the stems off of them. We're going to be chopping these up, obviously, so we're not too, too worried about keeping the leaves intact, other than it, it does help with uh, chopping them down the line, so that one's still feeling sandy, so these are definitely getting another wash. conk and spinach here. But even big conk and spinach I saw when I was in China made this stuff look like it was small. I mean, this is this is large compared to most US spinach that I find or at least on par. Um, the spinach they were growing there in uh, Chengdu was more like fan yourself like big leaves of spinach. It was quite interesting to me. <laughs> One of the many things. Yeah, definitely washing this again. Feeling the grit.
It's a lot of spinach. It's a bigger bunch than I thought. Looking down at that bowl, I'm sort of like, I'm only like two thirds through this. Hello there, kitty outside. It seems like the local cats uh, marked their territory against my uh, ball hitch on my truck. They all, it's the one place that I see them all come and rub up against. There's several in my neighborhood, which serves their they're ballsy from coming into my uh, yard because while I'm allergic to, to dogs and don't have one of my own, my neighbor's daughter does. And so while it doesn't live here, there's quite often a large dog roaming around here that, uh, yeah, probably wouldn't like them too much. sure the yard smells of the dog being around, so they have to know there's a dog that, that rolls around in this backyard. While that's draining, we'll chop up some garlic here.
guess. What spinach and onion doesn't go great with the garlic? Is there garlic in this? There probably is. I love how they list spices in this. And then they list a bunch of spices like there's spices that they're not going to list. It's a local company that, that I mean, shouldn't be doing shady stuff. I, I'm relatively familiar with the operation. That label doesn't instill trust. Peel those sprouts right out of the middle after we smash them. Because apparently this whole bulb is sprouting. And as I've said before, the sprouts, especially if they're green, the, these would probably be okay. This guy's on the edge here. The green's going to be uh, better. So you don't want that in there. Doing a real rough cut on the garlic here. Project. Let's see. He might look good for this project, period. Um, okay. Fan on here. Heat on. The last of our oil in the pan. The last of our sunflower oil.
oil's hot enough here, so it's starting to smoke. Time to throw the garlic in. Oops, metal on metal, still not looking too good for that mic. Sorry about that. I'm just going to do these braids in the pan instead of the oven. Thank you for the auto host for you. I hope you're enjoying packs. Even though I know you're not here, but thank you for the host for you. So we got spinach and garlic in the pan now. Let's see. And I'm not getting good audio readings right now. So hopefully this isn't killing your ears. Gonna add a bunch of salt there. Some black pepper. Gonna kill the heat, or at least turn it way down. Actually, I'm gonna kill the heat. Go back to our other mic here now. Pretty easily. I, it went a lot smoother than I actually expected, but um, just used a tomato shark. But uh, it was smooth enough that a, a melon baller or a nicely, uh, maybe you got a sharp end spoon or something along that line. Um, it it worked, went pretty smooth. Thanks for the sparks. So we'll take, got bulk Polish sausage. just mix that in there hopefully use that to help cool down the spinach here yeah might as well get my hands dirty
Okay. I was going to use sweet onions for this, um, but I decided to just, I, I actually even bought the sweet onions here too, but then I saw these cute little guys and I was like, red onions really, even though they're more acidic, actually have more sugar in them, so actually I'm debating on baking them. Uh, my oven's dirty right now and it's smoking. <laughs> so uh, right now what I'm thinking is... Uh, doing a uh a braise on it the original plan was to bake them um but i'm, I'm having second thoughts now uh, and so we can do a braise here pretty easily as well i'll just use the same pan actually gotta wait for it to cool down a little bit though and we gotta stuff our onions and then i've got also on the menu tonight i've got blood oranges here uh, gonna be juicing those, zesting those, and turning those into a uh, sorbet. Uh, maybe, well, definitely with a little bit of uh, Grand Marnier, and uh, I'm gonna taste it. I'm gonna see if I'm, I've got some orange bitters too. And I sort of want to do, you know, see how much of a wide range of orange we can get going here with this sorbet, with not just the fresh, but a little bit of the alcohol, a little bit of the burnt. And we'll, we'll see if we can squeeze the bitters in there, too. Let's get this cleaned out. Yeah, I think some of the sugar got, uh, when I did the uh, cinnamon rolls last week, uh, I think some of the sugar, I did, I did the cinnamon rolls in a pan full in my large cast iron pan, but I did it with caramel on the bottom, and towards the end there they had puffed up so much that I, they were pushing the caramel out of the pan, and I think it was pushing it onto the ground, and so I think there's a bunch of sugar on the floor of the oven. So we'll start stuffing these guys. Espresso spoon or demi toss spoon? Oh, I forget the proper term for a spoon, but it goes with espresso. True to form for me. I may not know what the name of something is, but I probably know what it does. And actually, I think I'm gonna pop out a couple of these guys too, at least the center of that, and see if we can't sort of force that guy on top there nice. Hmm. 
Now I'm debating if maybe I should add some breadcrumbs to this mixture because this is going to create liquid. I actually think I'm going to do that. We'll unpack this guy and we'll add some breadcrumbs. I got some panko kicking around. Probably gonna have leftover uh, stuffed onion filling, but I've got leftover over uh, pork dumpling filling too so that'll make for an interesting dinner here and you know what I didn't even season this wow I was trying to stuff things already that's me just go straight to to it uh, I already salted that spinach pretty well, so I'm not going to add a ton of salt there. We'll add some MSG as well. Because everything's better with MSG and pepper, even though there's probably enough pepper in the sausage already. Stacks. Okay, so we got Polish sausage and spinach mixture here, and our hollowed out onions, and we're just gonna stuff it in. and then add our cap back. Sort of like the perfect spoon for doing this. It fits in there and just works great. It's great having right tool for the right job. Oops, runaway onion. That was too much.
I used, I have what's called a, a tomato shark. Um, sort of like a melon baller with teeth on it, used for uh, taking the cores out of tomatoes. And it worked great for this, but, uh, gotta wash that again. Um, but melon baller probably would have worked fine. Um, sharp spoon would have worked probably fine. Um, it, it was actually pretty, a lot easier than I expected. <laughs> it just sort of hollowed out like melon, actually. Um, I originally intended to do it with sweet onions. I actually bought them. I got a couple of sweet onions here now. Um, but I saw these cutesy little red onions at the farmer's market this morning and was like, yeah, I got to try it to do it with those. And it doesn't have to be with, I'm using spinach and sausage here, or spinach, yeah, spinach and sausage here, but all sorts of things you could stuff in here. You could do mushrooms, you could do uh, nuts, and you can do, uh, you could do sort of like a winter uh, uh, parsnip mix would be good, veggie mix inside of this. Um, all sorts of things you could do. And if you didn't, uh, I did add a little bit of breadcrumb besides just the, the spinach in with the pork to hopefully dry it out, keep a little bit of that moisture. If you looked, it was towards the beginning of the stream. It, it was pretty straightforward. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like a good uh, campfire uh, food. Also something you could easily prep ahead of time and just uh, be small and easy to carry. Just throw it in the fire. Yeah, so I, I don't think I'm going to try and brave the oven tonight. I think we're going to do these on the stove. Um, so we'll... Oops, we'll transition that too. So that we can... Get a bit of a zoom on this. Wow. Hopefully you guys aren't getting drop frames or anything. My computer is running rather slow here. That's the first time I've noticed that happening with my computer.
use a little bit of olive oil since we're out of the good stuff here. That was a lot of the good oil. That was too much good olive oil. And then because we know oil and water mix very well, <laughs> we'll start with onions. <laughs> Put some stock in there too and do a braise with these. Let's see here, what else can I close? Put these guys in the pan. Oh, come on. OBS is just working in slow-mo here. Hopefully it's, I mean, it looks like my stream on the, on the website isn't doing too bad. If I look, if I'm watching my own stream, but my OBS is working like it's having a hard time. Let's Try closing that and see if that helps. So we got pork stock cubes. And those are uh Homemade pork stock that I froze into ice cubes. Very handy to pull out little bits of stock at a time if you ever need a little bit at a time like, like I do now without planning ahead of time. Okay, so I also, I'll do a combination of a pound and a half or 24 ounce bags, which is usually about just about right for uh, a project and then we'll do a bunch of ice cubes with the the spare leftovers and they'll give me small amounts to add into other things throw out my sausage packaging I'll be right back Okay, so while those are simmering away, I'm gonna get started here with our blood oranges for sorbet.
Yeah, you're at a decent tip. You're just not very exciting right now. Uh, Sort of pretty, sort of ugly. Definitely flavorful. Definitely beautiful ruby red juice. Like I said, we'll throw in a little booze, make it a little bit more interesting, just frozen orange juice. It's darker red after you, in some places, certain ones, it's darker red as you zest it. That's probably enough zest there. I don't want to overload it, I want to turn it into with pulp, they have it all be zest. Even though zest probably will contribute at least as much flavor, if not more, than just juicing these. Really, it's gone down now. Can you see me now? I don't have any notifications. I have a grand total of 25 drop frames during the stream, which is more than I would want. But uh, otherwise, other than my CPU being used a bit higher than usual, it seems to be okay now. Uh, well, we'll see. Yeah. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Mando's favorite tool. At least I think it was Mando that made comment. Can't have a. Uh, can't let Mr. Tags have all the suggestive jokes. These are blood oranges. Let's 
So nice, beautiful ruby red color. One sweet. <laughs> So sorbet is pretty uh, simple recipe. Uh, it's typically, uh, or at least ratio. I typically go with a one part juice, one part water, half part sugar, plus any added flavorings or enjoyments. And on top of that, I'm just going to guess how much juice I have visually because weighing that out would be a pain. <laughs> it's too much work. juice off of my board. I'm doing it so you guys can see it here, but this stuff stains too. Those spots are going to be here for like a week. cutting boards that actually makes them better. Um, cutting boards or copper or copper uh, alloys, um, they're, they don't hold a virus. They don't hold, like, stuff will seep into the pores of wood, but studies have shown that the wood is also equally good at killing anything that tries to seep into it. And copper or brass or they they use a uh, uh, copper and brass door handles a lot in hospitals these days because they're they they don't allow things to stay alive on them. sort of funny considering some states, I've worked in Arizona, and Arizona, they don't allow you to use, well, if, if you're following their laws to the T, which I assume most places don't really read into them this, di this deeply, but uh, wooden utensils are, are not legal to use in Phoenix. They're popping open. And turn that down a little bit. Give you guys a better idea of what's going on. There. Insides are squeezing out a little bit.
it's starting to make more noise now, though, so I know it's starting to run lower on liquid. Survey, uh, hand crank ice cream machine, yeah. Mostly pulp free juice there with that. We'll add, let's see, do a cup and a half of water there. meat away for at least for the moment. sugar. Actually, I did a cup and a half, so I should probably do three quarters of a cup of sugar, but let's, let's give that a try. Just is these. salt. Yeah, I'm going to add a pinch more sugar too. Because it's me. Pull out both of these guys. We got 
Woodford Reserve, Woodford Reserve, Orange Bitters, add a couple of drops of those in there. And we'll do a little Grand Marnier. If you're one of the more famous liqueurs in the world, uh, if you're not familiar, it's a orange cognac with a bit of a burnt orange flavor to it. They're starting to cook at least most of the way up. If you notice, well, I don't know if you can see with the camera there, but they're at least halfway up looking well cooked. So we're getting there with those onions. Oops, sorry for bumping the camera. screen is still a little bit cloudy even after I, I gave this a pretty good wash and a pretty good scrub with a uh, toothpaste to try and clear up the, the plastic on it but it's still got too many abrasions and cuts to look too pretty. I'm noticing it's got a little dust or something on it so I'm giving it a quick rinse. It is much clearer than it used to be though. Okay, so we got that, we got this, we got this, we got these guys, that's all set, that's all set. We're going to need a spatula to pull it out when we're done. We're going to need a container to put it in when we're done. We got our frozen core here that I've had sitting in the freezer. I pretty much just leave it in the freezer so I can use it whenever I need. Don't have to worry about clearing out room whenever I want to use it. Of course it does mean that I need to take that room up in my freezer for something else. Kidding. sweat or something in my eye. It's bothering. It's watering on me. Um, okay, so we got our core. Got our stirring paddle. We got our sorbet. With all the sugar. <laughs> Thank you. 
the way I'm doing this, there is a possibility of a little granular sugar to it. If you want to, you can um, go ahead and give it a bit of a, uh, turn that, that uh, sugar into a simple syrup before you mix it in. There we go. And start stirring. Thank you for the embers. Yeah, they're handy. Uh, most of them, you can, you can find one with a motor these days for almost the same price as one of these. So, I mean, unless you're going used. <laughs> but then again, that, that, you know, there's something to be said for keeping them busy. This and kombucha has been usually the things of my suggestion for that actual thing is parents that want to save money and uh, work with their kids or keep with their kids is making uh, fresh fruit sorbets by hand and uh, getting them hooked on uh, fermenting kombucha and doing all the work to making kombucha. Um, both uh, projects that they can take some appreciation from and uh, save you some money around the home. Especially since you can make kombucha from tea. I mean, it's, it's rather, you can make kombucha rather cheap. I need like a mini cam that's just like drilled into the side of this thing so you can see it swirling. This guy is anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. And it's sort of a judgment as to when you're done too because it's not gonna most of these ice cream machines are not going to get it rock solid hard. They're just going to get you starting with the crystallization. Um, you can throw it in the freezer and forget about it for an hour or two, finish your dinner or whatever, and come back and give it one more stir, and that'll be just about right. I am starting to get some built. It doesn't look so much. Uh, it doesn't like. What happens is it much more freezes on the bottom and the sides where these paddles scrape it off than the whole mixture turning icy. 
And so it'll continue to look liquid for quite a bit longer, I think. Um, even though if you look at the paddles closely, um, we do have a little bit of crystals on the edge of the paddles here. If you look on the back of this guy here, Actually, I don't know if you can really see them. But uh, this will be done by, you know, sleeping time. You know, it'd be good for a late night snack tonight. Uh, probably won't be set up by the time I finish the stream here. Actually, I'm probably going to wrap up the stream here pretty soon. Because these onions are starting to actually look pretty good here. Um... We do have, this guy here is always all the way cooked to the top, at least in the back. Same with this one. Um, we're getting there. I'm getting there. But I've had this guy, this little uh, ice maker, I've had this guy, well my mom's had this since this is a hand-me-down from my mom that I used this as a kid myself to make. Uh, we used to make slushies. We used to make uh, slurpees were always a big thing in my house as a kid. Um, so we would make uh, homemade slurpees out of the out of this. We'd make uh, fruit sorbets out of this. Uh, my mom would often make a, a combination of homemade vanilla ice cream with homemade... Uh, orange sorbet and the two combination the, the vanilla cream or orange vanilla Yeesh. The downside to this is you probably have to set up one of their cell phones like right here in order to get them to stand here for 10-20 uh, minutes. <laughs> If you look at the liquid now, it seems like it's almost got a little bit more of a skin to it almost. It's a little bit more glossy looking. And it's not thickening up, but it, it looks slightly visually thicker. Like, more like a sauce than uh, water at this point. And so, we're starting to get things going. We got a nice little rim of pink around the sides of the, of the bowl here, where the ice is formed. Well, in my case, I also have, I mean, I'm not much better than the kids because, I mean, I'm sitting here doing this with the, my stream right here. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm just using a PC instead of an iPad or a cell phone. Gonna take a piece of foil here and put it over the top of these onions here for a couple minutes. Make sure we're cooking the tops too.
the Formula One testing is done for the year. Got all the cars ready to go to Australia. Looking forward for that to happen since obviously my Red Wings aren't doing much this year. You can see now that it actually has a little bit of thickness that it's actually pushing around. It's definitely got some ice crystals in there. saying we're probably about 50 to 60 percent maybe 65 percent done here with what this cylinder is going to do for me um, as you can see we do have a little bit of a thickness there still going to it turned out a bit darker than I expected it to. Normally these have a nice, uh, with the juice of these are almost more of like a uh, ruby grapefruit fruit color than uh, actual blood, red, orange. And these guys are dark. I don't know if it's because we're in part of citrus season. Some of those guys weren't, weren't feeling that, that, I mean, they weren't feeling 100% there. So I don't know. As far as prime ripeness, I mean. You sort of want to switch up which direction you're doing. You'll, you'll realize that when you get a batch that gets really thick, this one isn't so bad. But uh, you you want to change your direction after every couple of turns because it'll turn it and, and spread it across the side in one direction and it'll scrape it in the other direction. The sides of the bowl, that is.
All right, I'm uh, getting pretty close there. That's <laughs> for me too. <laughs> They're getting pretty close there. We got it. That's looking good. So we'll go with that. Uh, not a hundred percent way there, like I said before. We're about oh seventy percent of the way there, and the rest of the way we'll do in the, the freezer with a quick stir or two throughout the evening. What did I do with my spatula? Got it dirty again already. This is a rather small batch and I did put a decent amount of liquor in there so there, there may be a little bit of antifreeze going on in there. <laughs> yeah it's a great color for, like I said it's a bit darker than I expected but it's a great color for, I mean, awesome color for Halloween. So we'll just put a cover on that and throw that in the freezer. back here let him defrost let him defrost and then in the morning I'll uh, give him a room temperature water rinse and sanitize it with uh, alcohol and after the alcohol dries out throw it back in the freezer so it's always at the ready so let's see what we've got here for our onions Those are looking lovely. Now we should wash all these. I'm going to get a photo of those guys actually. Just like that. Lovely, lovely. And I think we'll use a bowl for these. You can see the onions cooked all the way through there. It's nice and soft and opaque. I sort of hope when I get them in the oven, uh, I mean, 
like I said before, I didn't want to do the oven because I got some stuff on the bottom of my oven smoking up the house whenever I turn it on. I got to clean out the oven properly. Uh, but if I put these in the oven, I think these would have turned out amazing roasted in the oven because you get that nice caramelization of the onion on the outside. It'd be nice and dark. Um, so this might have been a little bit better for the picture. Now we got a little stickage. Cut the heat here. No, 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 I have not taken any Master Chef tests. I hold them in major regard. Yeah. A little bit of our sauce over the top. I have no garnishes that I want to throw on there, but at least a little bunch of time would be cute on that too. Take a photo of our blood orange stained cutting board here. And I will post a picture of these and a picture of the sorbet as that uh, solidifies a bit later up tonight on Instagram. I'd uh, like to thank all of you guys for joining me. Chris Ray, if you're not familiar with Chefs and why I said that I, I am most certainly not a Master Chef, Master Chefs are, are, uh, go through an ACF certification. There's about 60 of them in total in the U.S. Most of them are running casinos and stuff like that. They go through a week-long certification program by some of the most well-regarded and well-renowned uh, chefs in the world, and it's a week-long uh, hell. Uh, they're, they're doing tests for 12 hours, and then they don't even know about stuff until the next for the next day until that night, and so they're studying. It's like six, six days of them doing nothing but cooking and planning for cooking. No sleep, no, no, they just, it costs them, uh, they typically don't pay for it themselves, obviously, but it's a six-figure test uh, in order to even take. Um, master chefs I have very high regard for. Um, so uh, if not familiar, you should check them out because they're, they're really cool people. Uh, I'm, I'm just a dude that likes to cook. Uh, anyways, uh, like to thank all you guys for joining me this evening. Uh, very happy with the way these stuffed uh, onions with sausage and spinach turned out. I'm gonna really enjoy these. Uh, blood orange uh, sorbet turned out great. And I will be back on Sunday. We're gonna be doing hummus on Sunday. I'm uh, gonna be doing it from scratch from got dried garbanzo beans, which I used uh, the other about a week, a week and a half ago for soup. We're going to use the rest of those and turn those into uh, some homemade hummus. So do that on Sunday and next week, all next week from that, we're going to be, I'm going to be doing, uh, uh, doing progression of uh, duck comfy. So hope you come, come back and check me out again. I uh, hope you all have a great night. Thanks. And I'm going to check if there's anyone to host, but not often these days, but we'll see. Thanks and have a good night.